Sha'sa narrated that we were sitting in the masjid and Abu Huraira was there. فَأَذَّنَ الْمُؤَذِّنُ The Mu'adhin called the Adhan. فَقَامَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ يَمْشِي فَأَتْبَعُهُ أَبُو هُرَيْرَ بَصَرَهُ حَتَّى خَرَجَ مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ So a man stood up and began walking from the masjid. So Abu Huraira's eyes followed him, or Abu Huraira watched him with his eyes. حَتَّى خَرَجَ مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ Until the man left the masjid. فَقَالَ أَبُو هُرَيْرَ And then Abu Huraira remarked, he said, what? أَمَّا هَذَا this person here, فَقَدْ عَصَى أَبَ الْقَاسِمْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ He has disobeyed Abu al-Qasim. May Allah raise his rank and grant him peace. Abu al-Qasim is who? Muhammad bin Abdullah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ From this hadith is obviously that when the adhan is called and you're in the masjid, then you don't leave the masjid until the iqama is established and the salah is established. Exempted from this is needs, hajat. You have a need, you need to go to the bathroom. You can't pray without wudu. You go to the bathroom. You need to make wudu, you make wudu. There's an issue in your life, you know, you didn't notice it, but you know, there's something very serious coming that's going to harm you at a certain time if you don't make that appointment. You may be excused as well for that. But on the everyday routine, at that time, don't leave the masjid. Right? Don't leave the masjid as Abu Huraira. Mentioned that the man who did so is what? Someone who has disobeyed Abu Qasim. He has disobeyed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A story here about the keenness of my Shaykh Muhammad Umar Bazmu in worrying about this hadith in his practice. That he had many, he still has, Hafizahullah, many, many responsibilities. The man is a researcher, a writer, a teacher, a university professor, supervisor for thesis writing and, and production. He is a person who goes to the jail to debate the khawarij and to call them back to the way of Ahl sunnah appointed by the leaders and the scholars to do so. He's known for his ability to argue and invite the people of disobedience and misguidance back to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's a man who is, in terms of responsibilities, he is heavily, heavily burdened by many, many responsibilities. jihad, and so many different, you know, government, university, personal life, all of this, very, very heavily burdened. And so he used to like, when he was made responsible to give a class at the masjid, from Maghrib to Isha, he used to try to get out of the masjid before the adhan, so he could get to the next thing he was supposed to do. You know, not to not pray in the masjid or something. But to what? To get to the next thing. To get there on time. And many of the things he would do would be on opposite sides of the town here and there. So he would try to end his class. He would ask a student to alert him when there are two or three minutes before the adhan. And he would end his class and try to excuse himself out of the masjid. And me being the young student that we didn't have much understanding of his situation, I used to dislike this from my shaykh. I used to think... Especially when I saw the common people coming to that masjid. And they see a study circle breaking up. And the students as well, because the sheikh would leave, many of the students would take that opportunity to maybe get part of the way across town back to the masjid in their neighborhood between the adhan and the iqamah. And there are 20 minutes usually in Saudi Arabia between the adhan and the iqamah. So people wanted to use that time to maybe, if they have to drive across town, get halfway there or cut a distance. And the masjids are everywhere. So wherever you are, and the iqamah is about to be called, you can pull over and make the salat in the masjid. So it's not fleeing from the masjid, it's just strategy in actually using that time between the adhan and the iqamah. So I used to dislike it because I felt that the common people who are generally ignorant and they don't come to the lesson, they, the more dedicated or religious ones, would be coming near the adhan time. And they would see a lot of students leaving the masjid just as the adhan was being called, sometimes out of their keenness to observe this hadith, you know, quickly moving before the mu'adhan would start the call of the adhan to get outside of the door. And I used to think that the people seeing this is a harm for the image of knowledge. That it's like the adhan is about to be called, so here come the students of knowledge rushing out of the masjid, so as not to be trapped in the masjid. Right? I didn't like that view or that image. So I would advise my shaykh, you should stay, you should stay. You know, the students leave as well sometimes. Maybe half the students would leave. And we want the benefit of staying in the masjid, waiting from one salat to the next, 
It's a kind of ribat. There are many virtues in, in that, right? And from my angle, I had my reasons why I wanted to encourage it, not knowing all of the things my sheikh was facing. And so I would, this is what I would do, I would have a concern, I would always have concerns and questions on the topic. I would try to stand in, in the way of my sheikh and stop him from leaving. So he would be trying to get to the door, I would stand in front of him, I would say, sheikh, you mentioned this, and I would try to physically you know, slow him down from getting to the door. And I viewed myself as being successful when I could slow him down enough that the adhan would be called. As soon as the adhan was called, Allah, as soon as the first part of the adhan was made, the sheikh would give up trying to leave the masjid and come sit down at the front of the masjid. And I felt like I just won 20 minutes with my sheikh right there. I just won 20 minutes of personal time, I'm going to sit next to him, and now I get lots of follow-up questions. But again, that's what? The poor manners? Of the youth. I say that not to encourage anyone to be like that, but I encourage the youth, I encourage myself and all of my brothers to think, you know, about all situations included in a matter and not to look at matters from only their side, but to try to understand why certain things are going on. I didn't mean to go to that length into that story, but I mention this because yesterday evening we had a situation here where we broke up, we stopped the class with about six minutes or so before the iqama. And the majority of the people left and went out into the hallway, into the souk area. And I want to be really clear, that's a souk, that's not a masjid. For you to have in your heart the honor of the masjid, to consider the masjid a place that is upheld, you have to know the boundaries of the masjid. Where is the masjid? And what is outside of the masjid and what's inside of the masjid so you can apply this ruling? In this masjid, these doors here on the brother's side, these are the boundaries of the masjid. That out there is a market. That out there is a marketplace. It's not allowed to buy and sell in a masjid. That is a souk out there. This has been designated by the administration of the masjid as the entrance to the masjid. In this building we have a gym, bathrooms, a kitchen, we have office space. That doesn't take the ruling of a masjid. What takes the ruling of the masjid? That place which has been specified as the masjid. Without thinking about that, you can many times be confused and think the building is a masjid and sometimes you may come in and you wish to meet someone out there and you may feel guilty sitting down out there. So you come in here and pray two rakats and then you go sit down out there. And you do so because you don't want to sit in a masjid without having prayed two rakats. But that is a souk, that is a market, that is not a masjid. You are free to come in here. So I've given you something, I've made things hard on you a little bit from one angle. I'm giving you something the other way. And you come in here and you need to see someone out there and you don't have the intention to come into the masjid, you are free to sit down out there without praying two rakats. It is a souk, right? It is not a masjid. And Allah Ta'ala knows best.